Alright, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. Alright, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 6. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receive. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? All right, now, just to get a uh, you know, quick definition of the word chasten, or you can say chase, chasten, right? It means of a rebuke or misfortune. Have a restraining or moderately effect on. It says, um, especially of God, discipline, punish. You know, so being chastened doesn't feel good. Okay, it is a, a, a rebuke. You know, sometimes, like the scriptures say, you can rebuke. You, when you rebuke, you rebuke sharply. You know, sometimes you, uh, uh, the apostles, they rebuke publicly. And sometimes there, there are rebukes that are uh, privately, you know. And um, the most high overall, he rebukes the, his sons, the ones he loves. All right. Just as well, if if you are a father and you have children, you know, you're going to be uh, you're going to have your children in, in a certain discipline for for for, for the respect for their, them, them, their selves having a certain manner about themselves, you know, and how to control themselves in the public and. Whatever it may be, you know, uh, it could be school, you know, you want them to get certain grades, you know, hey, he might be a karate fighter or something, you know, he get disciplined, you know, so he's getting chastened. And here it is in America, better yet, you know, better yet known as uh, Bab Babylon the Great, which means great confusion. Esau don't want you to chasten your children because he needs your children to be wild and crazy you know he needs your children to not follow order and not be disciplined so that he can discipline them when he feels you see and this is why they aimed you know at the at the father fig the father figure in the so-called minority house uh, household they aimed uh at him to take him out of the household so that the woman would depend on Esau, the government, all right, and uh, if your child doesn't have discipline, then he's going to be in a whole lot of trouble, okay, he's going to go through the system, you know, he's going to be disciplined by Esau, and if he get too crazy, Esau is going to sit his ass down, okay, or might even kill him, so anyway, of a rebuke or mis misfortune, have a, have a restraining or moderately effect on so when you chasten your son as the scriptures say you know you know you have a effect on them you have um this way of training them you know being chastened is not a bad thing it's a good thing all right but nobody wants to go through it because it, it's a hard thing you see but when it pays out when it plays out in its time, okay, you know, when, when that, you know, you'll be thankful later. You know, that's why, you know, like like most, uh, you know, when I was young, a lot of older guys, you know, women older than me used to say, you know, when I was watching television with my pops and watching the comedy shows and things like that, they will always say, I'm, I'm glad, you know, my mama or my grandmother or my father or my grandfather whooped my ass. That saved me a whole lot of trouble. And then here it is. You know, here it is. I done got older. 
and then you look at this generation and you see how they are, you say the same thing. I'm glad the Lord uh, had my, my pops in my life or, you know, and I was brought up a certain way because I wouldn't do that dumb ass shit that most of these niggas out here are doing to get themselves in this world to hell, you know? But check this out. It's a beautiful thing. It's even more important, okay, when the heavenly father chasten you because, because now the Lord is delivering you, man. All right, because when when the Lord chasten you and, and actually, you know, put you through tribulations and things like that is for you to regain wisdom. And especially when you have the understanding of him. You know, when you come into this truth and you repent, the, the scriptures say, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You know, so you're going to be tempted by Satan, you know, and then also, you know, you're going to go through things. You're going to suffer, man. But that's just the chastening of the Lord. Because why? The Lord, when he reigns his terror and his wrath, his indignation upon this world and upon this place, you won't be on that side of his terror. The Most High will keep you safe. All right. So let's go back to uh, Hebrews 12. And six and six, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Now, I just want to see something real quick. Bear with me. Okay, let me read that again. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourges every son whom he receiveth. So whoever the Lord receives, all right, because most because the most high does the picking and choosing. And he takes upon himself, he scourges them, man. He chastens them. Meaning he put the belt to them. And the most high is a higher power than what we are. You know, he said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. The Heavenly Father is a rough teacher. He's the power of the universe. Okay? And when he deal with us, he makes sure that we go according to his plan and according to his liking. All right. And it's to save you because man got a way of sorting out many inventions. Man got a way of, you know, thinking he's clever and trying to cut corners. You know, man got a way of falling short. So we need the guidance and the chastening of the Lord in order to make it in this cruel, wicked, God forsaken world. Okay. So it says, um, if ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. You know, just as this, the scriptures say, it pleased the most high to bruise his own son. So how much more, you know, you joint unto Yahweh Shai as the heirs of the kingdom, you know, when the heaven when the heavenly father chastened his own his own begotten son, which is the son who who we love, which his name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. When he laid his life down and gave his blood up, you know, as a sacrifice for us, you know, he's the master, man. All right. So if the master get chastened, how much more the pupils says, if ye endure chastening, the most high deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteth not? So if you, you know, not going through the ring of fire, so to say, you know, and you're not catching no type of hell. You know, and you're having all the fun in the world. You know, you you getting everything you want, and you living your life in this this world. Then the Most High ain't dealing with you. All right. Now, verse eight. But if ye be without chast chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that means you're a bastard, man. You know, you're a bastard to the Heavenly Father. Now that's 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 whoo, whoo, whoo. I would rather be a son to the heavenly father. And 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 if it would, to, let me say this, if 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 my lot would be and I had a choice, if I had a choice, I would I would rather be a son to the heavenly father and a bastard in, in my flesh to my biological father. If I had the choice, I would if I could choose because it's so better to be a son of the heavenly father than to just have a father in your life growing up 
all right just like it's 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 a uh it's, it's it's a lot better to have spiritual fathers that can teach you this truth teach you the ways of the lord than to actually have um that fathership biologically you know you know if you have your father that's that is a beautiful thing having a male figure in your life to teach you and for you to grow to be a man that's beautiful but i'm just saying if you had a choice what would be better if you had a choice if you only could choose one or the other that's all i'm saying but having your father in your life is a beautiful thing having spiritual parents is a beautiful thing having the heavenly father itself and his son okay over you is a greater beautiful thing and so anyway but if ye be without chastisement whereof all are partakers then are ye bastards and not sons now the two-thirds we all know that the so-called negroes latinos native seminole indians all right the hispanics so-called west indians haitians they're all israelites but the scriptures say the Lord is going to destroy two thirds. So that means that what? The two thirds are bastards to the most high right now because the most high don't claim them. The most high is not looking at them as sons, even though they are sons. You know, you know, that's the worst thing for your father to disown you, man. Because why? You know, you you bring shame, you know, to your father's name. So if your father disown you, you know, it's like that. That's like a, a, a hex on you, man. You know, if you don't have the father's blessing, that's an that's a curse on you, man. OK. So that's deep, man. Let me read it one more time. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. And this is why this is a very important thing to have a father in your life, man, even growing up. You know, if, if it, it's a it was a blessed thing, I'll say. And especially if a, if there's a, you know, a father that cared, you know, for your well-being, you know, because um, the scriptures say man born of a woman is few days and full of trouble. You know, you growing up and learning only to 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 judge off your emotions and to live and make choices off your emotions, then you're going to find yourself in a world of hell. You know, you're going to have to go through. Uh, 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 the I'm gonna say you're gonna have to go through hell. You're gonna catch hell, and it's not gonna be because you're suffering righteously. It's gonna be because you are wicked, man. You're suffer. You're gonna be suffering because you're wrong, man. And then, hey, some guys, you know, they go to jail. They get into sports, and they get that type of father figure, brothers around them, and and that's what's you know disciplined them as far as. To, to, to structure their life so that they don't uh, have that mindset of a woman, you know, and being emotional. Sometimes the sports help men. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, him going to jail will help help a man in his way of life. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, the father, you need the father's blessing, man. You know, and Esau is basically still to this day in 2020, denying you of your father's blessing because he's tricking you out of your own salvation and this goes as this this goes heavy toward you women you israelite women for 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 not uh looking as your your man okay as as a as a uh, prince of the lord you know we all know that besides esau running the world these women uh have really basically running over the men running over the children you know, so anyway, this is our uh, verse nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much, much rather be in subjection unto the fathers of spirits and live, you know, because the men of the Lord who taught us this truth have given us, you know, a greater blessing than our biological parents, man, who raised us, you know. They basically handed off the keys to heaven, you know, and the heavenly father allowed that. OK, so let me read that again. Furthermore, we had we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live for they verily 
for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasures, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. That's that's right, you know, because it sucks. Sometimes, you know, you get frustrated and, you know, being that you got that stony heart, you want you get ignorant, man. You get you get, uh, you know, that spirit of unruly and and you want to do your thing. You know, you know, you can't really see the bigger picture of it. You know, sometimes when you're going through it, you know, you get mad. You know, then you like, fuck that. I'm going to defend myself. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do I'm going to do this for now. Long. I ain't going through that shit. See, when the Heavenly Father chasten us, you know, there's no way out. You got to go through it, you know. But those demons, you know, it's like the Lord be purging those demons from you. It's like a detox because, hey, a righteous man, he may not understand at the time. But he be fighting off the demons that be plaguing his mind to 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 go to go left. So it's kind of like a detox. And then finally, when the Lord uh, make a way for him to escape out of the hell he's going through. And then the Lord, you know, gives him that understanding, the clear eyes to see. Then he start rejoicing in the Lord, man, you know, and being thankful. All right. Give him all the praises and glory to the heavenly father. And now he don't gain experience. So now what he can do with that experience, he can teach others, you know, when other, when other brothers go through that similar situations and then a brother could console, you know, he can uh, uplift another brother when he's going through it, you know. So anyway, it says um, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, if it yielding, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So it yieldeth that peaceable fruit, meaning that fruit be ripe, that fruit be purged right. When, you know, my mom's always taught me when I was young, like I said this before, you know, in lessons in the past, that, you know, when I was young and I used, uh, would be with my moms, I didn't understand why she would perfectly cut a, a beautiful plant that was healthy. In my eyes, the plant was all right. Leave it alone. Just water it and let it get the sun. But she would take the scissors and clip off the limbs. And I'll say, Ma, why, why are you doing that? You messing it up. It look all stupid now. It's all like skinny. It's not looking healthy for. And she would say, because it's going to grow back stronger. And I never understood that until time went on. And then you look at that plant and that thing, you'd be like, damn, that shit grew back a whole lot stronger. You know, now, you know, especially if you got a plant that that, uh, you know, you have for years, you know, and you look at it and remember it when she first got it as it was a seed and a little stem, you know, but that applies to this truth. All right. To us, brothers, we're like trees. OK. Matter of fact, I believe that's in Psalms where the Lord said we're like trees planted by the riverside. You know, uh, let, let me continue. It says, uh, now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It says, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Yeah, because if brothers, you're going through shit, you know, and you're down, you're weak. Read the scriptures. That's what this lesson for, for the brothers that are weak. It says, and make strength excuse me and make straight path for the for your feet lease that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed and that's what that's what it is you know we're, we're all sick all right we're, we're all uh uh in need of a healer you know the mind body and soul so you know we are weak but we're conquerors through him that love us as as apostle paul said so we need yahweh man we need the heavenly father all right. We need to be saved. <laughs> we need to be saved. It says, verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the most high, lest any root of bitterness spring it up, trouble you and thereby many be defiled. All right. So that's basically the point. You know, I hope this lesson will be uplifting.
to those that be going going through it. We in Passover season, you know, and and before the Passover and little after the Passover is always a purge. You know, the apostles always speak about how the Lord is trimming that fat. You know, so you catch them little minor tribulations and shit. Things occur, you know, all at once and shit. Yeah, man, man. We need Yahweh Shine. We need to get out of this fucking body, man, and get in our new bodies and and reign uh, and, and uh, rule superior over this world, man. With with our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. We need we need the kingdom now, now, man, more than ever, man. And that's why uh, the heavenly Father Yahweh, he knows it, okay. And that's why we at where we at. You know, prophecies are. Uh, 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 coming to pass, man. Mm -hmm. Things are speeding up. You know, there's no going back. It's only going forward. So, you know, just continue into praying for fewer days here in this place, man. So with that, I hope you brothers were edified. I want to give all praises to you. How about Shem Yahweh Shai? Bar Shem I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.